and welcome to Wikipedia Weekly Network here, where Alvin Larsson and I, Jan Einali, are editing Wikidata Live. How are you doing, Alvin? I'm doing very well. I had a great day today. We had a lovely weather here. How are you, Jan? I'm doing well as well. I have just been outside a short, short while because I've been working as a mentor on Hack for Sweden this weekend. It was oh. the finalists, and I was a mentor for open source. Yeah. Unfortunately, no questions, or, or luckily, because they already knew what to do. I don't know. <laughs> we'll see. Figure out tomorrow when the jury uh, had the results. And right. Oh, show on. We have at least one watcher so far. Good, good morning. Yes. So, what will you do today, Alvin? Um, I'm thinking I'm going to create a. Uh... An entity schema so we can describe how, what an item should look like using a schema. And then, if times allow, I will also show how to use that schema so we can have like pre filled fields, so to say. Like, if we want to create, like in my case, a government agency, it will already tell me what properties I need to enter, and I can just fill it in like a form. So, that's my aim. And you, Jan? I have. Two tools I want to show and a query. So I'll see if I can get through all of this because one of the two is uh, quite new and the other one is not that new, but we haven't showed it here yet. So I thought it's about right. time. And then it, there's a query I return to all the time. So and I when and there was a question in the Telegram chat the other day, which I usually use that query to create the answer for myself. So I was going to teach people uh, that there's an example that you can use as a building block. Nice one. Uh, I must admit, yeah. I sometimes even use the cat one for yes. getting started. That's this a great start. Yeah. yeah. All of these example queries are like uh, really good if you sort of have some idea what you're looking for, because they're also when they are becoming the, the examples, they're usually quite well described. Yeah, indeed. All right, so I'm going to start uh, uh, sharing my screen here and see where we got. And this is just a page on English Wikipedia, but you can see something strange in my view here already, because there's a lot of dots. And these dots comes from this tool. And I'm going to show you the tool. Uh, I think I'm first going to show it here in. Uh, Oh, you cannot see the, my drop down here, but perhaps you will see this. Yes. So this is my add on, on manager in Firefox. And this is the tool. Uh, I think it's pronounced wizard, wizard for Wikidata. And I'm not sure. Uh, it, it, there's not a lot of uh, information here. There's a GitHub repository. So there's some more information. Uh, and there are also Chrome extensions, so you, you can use this in both. Not much information here, but luckily, there's a page on Wikidata, uh, even with a little uh, video. And you'll find this Wikidata colon. And then, of course, since this is quite hard to spell, you can also use the short link. Uh, I just created that 4GB. Capital U uh, will take you to this page, Wizard. And I think there's also links here for the Chrome and Firefox stores. So what does it do then, besides painting a lot of dots in gray and green? So it makes a dot for every link that has a Wikidata item. And it allows you to create a relationship from the uh, item of the article to some of these. So, and if I hover or if I press the green here, I think it will show. It, it didn't show. So, if I press, let's say, uh, here instead. Did it stop work today? Let's try to reload. Yeah. <laughs> so every time you 
load an article, it takes a little time because it has to take a look at the item and all, all the properties it has. But this is also a great thing up. to see, like, to see just how good the item is, because mm -hmm. the more green, the more interconnected the, the item is. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so, so here we saw it. So when I hover here, it says headquarters location is Copenhagen. And if I click here, it will even show you it even better. And I could another, add another statement here uh, that will have the value Copenhagen. So let me go up here and see if I can add something. Uh, I will say, uh, here's a good one, you do... jurisdiction kingdom of Denmark. So I'll press this one. And I'll add a statement and I'll press the property. This one, it couldn't figure out something. Sometimes you get some um, suggestions. So let's go with applies jurisdiction. I'll press that and then I'll press this uh, plus thing. And it will just turn this small little thing green. And let's head to Wikidata and see Oh, I wasn't logged in here. Am I logged in? Then I wonder what happened. We'll see. Oh, I was hoping it will be in my contributions here. No, so I made an <laughs> not logged in. Uh, contribution here. All right. So let's switch but, to. But it, it, it's cool that the tool is able to do that as well. Yeah. Let's see if I can switch to English here. Head to the. But, item but I think we here. had a couple of. Yeah. And let's check the history to see the edit. So here we can see the edit. Let's go to the diff to view it. Oh, no, let's not go to the diff because it's actually two edits. So it, why is it two edits? Oh, the, the first one is the actual value and the second one is the adding the reference. So let's check this one first. Indeed. So very simple, applies to your jurisdiction, the Danish real, realm, and then the next edit was, it also says which permanent ID it was sort of imported from. So it will show you very nice where, where we got the information. And that's sort of what you can do with this too. So it sort of allows you to edit from Wikipedia Without leaving the Wikipedia article, you can add information uh, on uh, on Wikidata. So it's sort of like Wikidata Bridge, uh, but you cannot choose the values yourself. The values has to be in the article, and the values has to be Wikidata links. So you you can't edit any data type. You can't add coordinates. You can't add strings or things or times uh, so so a bit limited but also uh, you don't need to write anything you just uh, pick and click yeah exactly you you get the items for free so to say i i already yeah. just by reading the first description i can also kind of see like a main subject which i imagine would be very common mm -hmm. here i think we can add um, this one as the director thing. let's see if it managed Indeed. to fi figure that out no, no options. So we'll go with the director or manager. Direct. Is he the minister the even in this case? Well, we he is a minister, minister, but that's not a property. Right. But I wonder here is there. I think it's just director. 
director slash manager. That's the one I wanted. No, to I think it's yes. the director one. Yeah. And let's see. Yeah, the other one is one for like I... movies and films, right? Yes, I think so as well. No, it, because you didn't reload between your. Ah, so this one still thinks I'm not logged in. Uh -huh. Ah, yeah. yeah, it the still page has to didn't know it. Yeah. Oop. Oh. Is there some a trouble with the, the single user logged log in today? There was some trouble some days ago with this. Yeah, it, indeed, it seems so. Because I imagine that should log you automatically in, right? Yeah, it should. Oh. Yes, so it made. Let's check here again if there's something new. No. No, that didn't. Very strange. Is it on the item? It's not on the item. It seemed to have failed. Either way, it not too bad it failed because we can see here it wants it to have mo modeled with this instead office held by head of the organization so <laughs> should probably do do that better either way but it's a little bit strange this has been consistent before for me right it might be related then to that you having this login hiccup currently yeah yeah it might not be the tool so to say no might might not be the tool Anyway, that's what this tool does. Uh, and now let's show the other thing I wanted to show you. Uh, so you all know about the Wikidata query service. We show it all the time. But uh, not too long ago, uh, this new thing show up, the Query Builder button. And now we also have a nice little preview here. I didn't see that the first time. I was too quick to, to press the button. So what this does, if you click that, it'll open up a new tab. And it will show you the query builder, which is sort of a, a more visual way to create a query. It's a little bit similar to, um, where is it, where you, the, the query helper here, but more powerful than that one. So. And it has a few things that is that are really neat that uh, it, you might want. So let's take trying to build an example query. A, a query that I took help from this to build a few days ago. So I wanted to query uh, municipalities that had a phone number, but only those that were referenced. And it has this very easy thing here, drop down, where you can see, oh, I only want them with the references. So you sort of get that part for free. And writing that in the query, otherwise only getting statements with references, that's a little bit tricky. And here you just get it in a drop down. So that's very neat. So let's go for phone number here. Let's see, phone number. Uh, and I want, regardless of value, but I only want them with references. So that's one thing I want. Then I want to add a condition to this. And I want it to be an instance of, here I, don't, here I want a matching, and I want the municipalities of Sweden. Could go with anything, anything here. This, 
Here I don't care if it has references, so it could go with or without. And that's my query. This. And you also have this nice and or or. So it's also quite cool. It's also a little bit tricky in if you're writing it uh, in, in the query, query service. And then you just click Run Query. And you'll get the results as we usually do. And I hope we get. We don't see the number here, how many it is. I got a limit here as well on the 100. I don't want 100 because I hope this is, will be more than 200. So let's run the query again. And still not the results, but we always have this thing on the side here. So if I edit Sparkle, it will open up in a new view you will actually see the code it produced. Let's flip this back one in and run it here to see that 290. So th they all had one, uh, which was good. But here you can also see how it actually created the query. So it has a subquery here in, and it has this was derived from to, to get uh, only things with the references. And this one is a, a little bit cryptic uh, to, to this read. This is a really nice one. <laughs> it is a really nice one. Yeah. And you can get a lot of inspiration borrowing things from the things you do with the query builder, because some of the things is really easy in the dropdown to get, uh, and they might be uh, a bit hard to write. Uh, so, so I really encourage you to go explore the query builder, and you find it just here in the top. Uh, uh, do, do, do. So, and I'm not going to go through everything you can do in the query builder. Uh, it has where, 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 where was it up here? So you can do these like. Uh, a very large number of conditions. And then you have with, without, regardless of value, uh, with or without, or with or without references. Include related values in the search. I don't know what that did. Oh, so it actually did the, the traversing here, uh, path traversing down. So you, I could have unchecked that because I knew it was only one. So a lot of neat things, and it's all very well explained here as well. So uh, that could help you out when you're building your queries. And then uh, there's, uh, I'm gonna show you here, I'm gonna go back to the query service, back to the start. Here's a query type that I have been writing, I don't know how many times, 10, 20 times separately from uh, like trying to figure out how do I do this? And the other day, someone was asking this question as well. And it's a very useful thing when you're doing an edit-a-thon, especially if you're having people who are multilingual and might want to translate article, articles. Because one thing that you might want, and what I'm usually looking for, I want to find items that has an article on one language version of Wikipedia, but doesn't have it in the one I feel comfortable in writing in. But I want to wanted to find it in some that I can read. So in my case, it would be, I want to see perhaps uh, all things that are, have an article on English Wikipedia, but not on Swedish Wikipedia. Uh, and that's and you have to narrow it down because otherwise the query will time out. But you get that sort of a free in this example. So this example, uh, you can find it by go searching for not English. And it, this will go you the female scientist with most number of site links, but not English Wikipedia. And this will be our building block. Uh, so here's how it looked like. Uh, the first part here is just selecting a uh, a female scientist. First is the human, 
the second one is female, and the last one is scientist. And then it orders them by link count, and that's also pretty cool for uh, editathon because you can start with sort of the most important. Of course, that's sort of if you do that, we do that, it will also make them more important <laughs> because they have more site links. And then the, this part, filter not exist. This is, it shouldn't have an article in English. In my case, I want it to have it in English. I don't want it to have one in Swedish. So I'm going to change the language code here. Oh, not to ESV, just to SV. And you have to do it in two places. And then for the second part, uh, I want it to have an article in English, we can actually copy this part of the query and use that as a building block again. So I'm actually going to put that in front here. Uh, and instead of not exists, I want it to exist. And I'll go with English. I'll have to change back into places English. And now when I run this, hopefully it will give me all the articles about female scientists with an article in English Wikipedia, but not one in Swedish. And it will order them by the number of uh, site links it has. So it will sort of uh, make it more easy for me to, to pick which one I want to go with. So let's see. If, if it worked, if or if I messed something up in my cut and paste here. So it finds almost 1,500 articles. That seems plausible. And we have Julia Hall, Brahman, Robinson, 25 site links, and probably not then in Swedish. Let's check the item to see if that's correct. Uh, ooh, and uh, yes, I, I will share the link for this one. Uh, now let me just first here to see it so I'm not fooling you. So scroll down to the site links way in the bottom. It should have something in English. Yes, it does, which makes it possible for me to translate it. It doesn't have anything in Swedish. All right, so now I have a target as well. So very useful for me. and probably useful for more people. So that's, I'm going to share this, this link, short URL. I'm actually going to put it here in the chat. See, I'm not totally sure it posts to all the places. So I'll also put it up as a banner so you can see it. Let me edit this one. Save and show. So for capital G, C, capital K, that will take you to this uh, that I just created. And I find this one to be super useful for also just finding out like even if i'm not actually are translating them it will show me something in this topic that we should have in this uh, language version and as you can see here we have several with over 20 links that we don't have on swedish wikipedia so there's some work to do now of course you might even go even further further here to to make it even more uh, one thing that you might say this is super important and might also be even easier to find some sources is if we say that uh, uh, it should be a Swedish citizen, citizen as well. I'm not sure we will have a hit, but if we do, we should go write that article. Let's see. One result. I imagine. Right. Katarina Swanberg. Uh, we should go write that article. <laughs> uh, 
Yes, and as Jane says here uh, as well, uh, if we want some other occupation, you can switch it out. If you don't care about the gender, you can just remove that line. Uh, and you can go with other things as well. You could go with cities or whatever. Uh, the, the query, the first part, you, you need something in that because, because otherwise it will time out uh, unless you're going from perhaps very tiny language versions or like if you if each each of the pair are very small you might be lucky i'm not sure but it's easier to have something that is a little bit specific indeed i think you could do a full wiki one if you use a different query to like query and do use the sql dumps i think we might have shown that to the ones mm -hmm. yeah um, but that might be a trick to do it. I think some people do it when they want like statistics for this type of thing. Yeah. Um, so that might Indeed. be a way to do it. Yeah. And I think that was the things that I had on my mind today to show you. And did nice. Right. And I'm going to jump straight in, like, jump straight in uh, the Wikidata schemas. And my task for today is quite simple. I want to create a schema for government agencies because I want the easy way to create new items for this type of information. And the first thing I want to check is actually this page. So something that's rather tricky currently on Wikidata when it comes to entity schemas is finding them. But I ran into this great page, uh, which I'm going to put up the short link for. And it should be that one. No, it should actually be that one. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> there is a rather tricky here because they look so similar, especially yes. when you create them next to each other. So yeah. this was a page I ran into when you're searching Wikidata. And it's great because it tries to list the entity schemas in Wikidata by category. So it's using like the instance of which the schema is targeting to kind of give it a category here. So we can see that we got the structures and then we got buildings and such directly. We got also got, also got a category called arts and such. And actually for my case, so I want to check if there already is one for government agencies. So I can just go here to government and see what's there. And I can see Brazilian laws and decrees, embassy, that might be a relevant one. So I might open that to just have a look at what it looks like. The legislation, politician, Swedish municipality. Um, but no, nothing, nothing here. So I can go ahead and create a new schema. And I have the benefit here of that we actually have already documented a bit of this data model for government agencies over at Wikipedia Gov directory. Let's see if we can find it. It's an item about it. I didn't know that. Exit. That and say data. data. If it feels like loading today, there we go. Yes, we ended up in the right place. Um, and while one can read more about the project here, I want to head straight over to agency data model. And short link for that page would be this one. And this is great because it actually lists exactly what I want. It lists the instance of, country is not one, applies to jurisdiction, and so on. Uh, a particular interesting one is parent, as well as main regulatory text, classification of function of government. This kind of URL that I would need to find a bunch of examples for and try to figure out on my own. But I want to turn this into schema. So I can do quick editing and also validate the items against it. So I just want to convert this table here essentially to uh, a schema. And 
we can actually create new items directly from the sidebar here. Uh, create new item as well as new like scene. But we don't have such a link for schema. We actually need to first head over to the special pages. Open that one in a new tab. And we should have, I'm going to start for it. Entity usage, that's not it. Entity might have been a very broad term. Create a new entity schema, that's what I want. So we we got a possibility to do a label here, description and all that type of stuff we want. But we also got a small hint here about how to write this shaped expression. I'm actually gonna do it my regular way. I have a bit of a boilerplate, which I'm gonna copy paste in here. Um, so we've got the prefix. This is very similar to Spark QL as well as something called start and kind of the data model itself, because one can take you have more than one of this. And then we can use state properties. And usually in a shaped expression, you would actually hear state like the data type. Um, but in Wikidata, we don't necessarily need to do that because in Wikidata, the data type is always connected to the property. So for example, when we do property proposal, we say what data type it is. So it's a thing in shaped express, which is much broader than Wikidata. But in Wikidata's case, just that definition is that important. So what we can actually do here is just list the various properties we need. And if needed, we can also say like, hey, just one of these items are the ones we want. So we could technically do something like this and say Q123. Q1, 2, 3, 4, and essentially say that this can only be an instance of this too. But I don't think we have such a case for this type. The dot here means that it can be anything. So here we say, and I created this bit of a sheet sheet because I always forget. It doesn't matter how often I write shape expression. So that plus means that we can have one or more instance of here. And the question mark means that we can have zero or one. And we also got the star here for zero or more or an asterisk. Um, and based on this, I essentially just want to migrate this list over here. So I'm going to get started on that. And that's the correct list. I can close that one down. So instance of, we already got that. P17 for government agencies, super important. Um, so I'm going to go down here and say VDT, VDT, it can be anything, could technically specify that's a country, but that's not super important for the time being. Um, should it be zero or one or zero or more? Or more? I think that I imagine this for like state government agencies for the time being. And therefore, I would go actually with a zero or one. I think there are special cases, but this is more for the generic case. So zero or one would be the question mark. And then I just end that row by doing that. Uh, the semicolon going back here applies to jurisdiction. That's an interesting one. Um, I would imagine because we have already said the first one, limiting country, I would say we would have the same type of limitation here. So it can be anything and one more. Yeah, so here is common to have more. So this? for example, in the UK, we would have, you could have one, two, four, or zero to four. Oh, right. Because it, uh, it, it might specify Wales, point. Scotland, and right. things like that. That, that makes a lot of sense. Then we would change that looking at the, the sheet sheet I have created, giving it a star. So it can be zero or more. And let's go with the next one located in the administrative tutorial entity. Um, that could also be zero, I imagine, because we have plenty of government agencies like just on the national level. Um, could it be more than one? 
Right. Possibly. I imagine so. I, I it actually depends think a little bit how you. Yeah. Yeah, I, I would imagine that. Um, yeah. It's a tricky one. But I, the most important thing here is that it also has a bit of a discover. So if someone mm -hmm. uses this schema to create something, they have the option to add things here. Um, and also need to figure out the data model itself. EDT, let's do the next one. And this is very nice that we already got this. So here we got parent institution, which, whoops, got a little too much there. It can be any item and yeah, I imagine one could have more than one as well. Um, it could also have zero, like highest cores, mm -hmm. for example. Mm -hmm. Would be a common example of something that wouldn't have anything above them. Then we get into a bit more social ones, which is a little bit related to this part itself, the golf director part. And I'm gonna essentially just do imagine that would be it. And let's give it a phone number. And here we can actually see that the data type, we actually have it noted here. And this data type, if I would open a property, say that, um, it would actually save the data type here. So this might not be the case in Orchard like knowledge bases. And therefore, schema schemas like this one allows you to specify it, but it's just not something that Wikidata would use anyway. And thank you, Jan, for well, um, And phone number, yeah. I would imagine we would prefer one, but I imagine also there are cases when all of these values would be, <clears throat> would be very doable with more than one. Here we got the website. Um, Imagine if I want to do this to mandatory one, it's a, it's a very good one to have, but it wouldn't be the case in every country that one has one. So I'm gonna opt for there being more than one just to get a bit more coverage, even if all government agencies, for example, here in Sweden would have one. Um, the, Cases. I imagine that like all government agencies has a main regulatory text, but I don't think they always would be. I don't want it to raise an error. Um, the question is, do they zero or more? Yeah, yeah. I think there will be plenty of cases like that one. And it's, yeah. it's a little bit repetitive here, and it would be in plenty of cases. But it's going to create a lot of value in just a moment. Here we got a very nice one. That's okay. Classification of function of government. It's just with a higher number. It's a new one. Here it can just have one. So mm -hmm. it should be zero or one. T. And to the next one. Another Did you great forget one. The dot? I forgot the dot. This is why we do this together. Um, and I think I'm gonna stick with this one for the time being. I'm gonna add the rest uh, of this. There, there is something wrong with the table. Uh, because P407 then? is the language. Uh, it's showing something strange there. Um, right, and we also got that with official website. Yes, which is should be eight five it's six. Also the language, right? Yeah, of course it is. That one should be eight five six. Okay. So here, T eight five six, and this one. That's a long one. I'm gonna to need to look it up. Should start at nine something. Exactly. Let's see, 
There we go. Yeah, we are almost at 10,000. We did pass it. Or are we? Maybe not. Oh, we are past it. Okay. Yes. That's a milestone in, in yeah. its own way. So let's create a label for this one. Um, let's see. Okay. Copy things I can't spell. Oh, government agency. I don't know what we're doing. I don't even think we got rules for these labels. Um, something like that. That's my starting schema. I still gonna like add the rest from that table, but I don't think we need that for the time being. So, oh no, I left, left my boilerplate there as well. Okay, that that is a thing for me to clean up at a later stage. It might also be super transparent to add a comment like for my boilerplate here for each of this, uh, especially the long ones. People don't usually. No, but no, the important thing here for me is like created an EID, like we got QIDs, PIDs, some LIDs, and so on. We also got EIDs. And this is super useful because now we're gonna head over to another tool. I'm gonna bring up a link to that. Mm -hmm. We have been showing this a couple of times. Mm -hmm. It's super useful. So I'm gonna head over to it. Or... So it says loading, very small up here in the top. Gonna take a, a second or two. There we go. I'm gonna zoom in a little directly as well. To make sure I'm logged in. Yes, we made that error once or twice in the show here. Right, and uh, uh, there's something going on with the logins today. Yeah, there, there is something going on. We need to do that the hard way. It's gonna take a second because oh, stop. Um. Let's see. So allow Craigle to do it. It's gonna load again. Here we go. And now we can see that it tells us uh, that we this tool can create new Wikidata items from a form. Um, the forms are defined on a Wikidata page or using a shaped expression. So we can just put an E number in here, which I gonna do. We got a little over 300 schemas like this. Uh, so let's click go here and see what happens. Now I assume that my schema had new errors. It might be that I made a mistake. So, Yes, and we have here the, while we wait, uh, number P10,000 was Research Vocabularies Australia ID. Nice. And it's still loading. Going to give this a reload, actually. And... Um, I actually want to head over to an example item here to make sure, let's see if we can get an error here in case it's, so I, I think I showed this a while back, but I have like a user script 
which allows me to check an item against the schema. And this is a government agency in Sweden. So I should be able to say, check it against the schema you created. And do I click enter here? Yes. So it seems that the schema actually works. It tells me, yes, it has instance of this item is great. It's located in an administrative tutorial entity. It got a phone number, it got a country, official website. And it says missing here, but it's like in orange and not in red because I have marked it such optional. Um, and then it also gives me this author properties. And this is one of the things I've actually found super useful because it kind of tells me what is missing in the schema itself. Mm. So I can kind of see that employees would be very nice to have in a government agency data model. Mm. Um, office held by head of government, another mm -hmm. one. Open corporate ID, another great one. Um, replaces legal form. Um, yeah, and a couple of additional ones here. Coat of arms, I imagine, would be a rather common one. Um, capital for some of them and that type of thing. So let's head over. So that's one thing you can do with them. Uh, validate items. That's one of their main purposes. Uh, it still says loading over here today. Um, I'm going to give it an auto reload and I'm going to quickly actually do shift a bit of debugging here on my second screen to see if it's something obvious that goes wrong. Um, no. If you try with just a, oh, an old right. thing, an old schema. I think it's the login because just opening a bit of a technical debugging screen on my second ah. screen revealed that Behind the scenes, it tells me that it failed to log in. Um, oh. And this is a bit of a tame today. So imagine. But let, let's try something that's already here. Um, oh, so that one works. So let's see if it works with any different. So E10 that is suggested here. No, I imagine. So something is odd today, but maybe we can actually use one of the regular forms to give you an idea of what's possible at least. So it says a lot of loading as well today. Uh, for a different type of a team, item used to, to illustrate. So we're gonna see, we could create one for an artwork. Um, yeah, let's do an artwork. So here we, we got a form for an artwork and I just need to look up an, um, an artwork that isn't in Wikidata, but it should maybe be in Wikidata. I head over to the National Museum of Sweden. Correct. And just browse their collections for something that's missing from Wikidata. Gonna head over to their collections and search their collections. And let's see here. We can maybe see if they have something new that's they have recently bought or something like that. That's not yet in Wikidata. That's usually a bit of a safe bet, both because the, the artwork is so prominent that they have like bought it for a lot of money and because it's new, it might not have been in a public collection prior to, to being here. So I'm gonna select this one slightly random. And that gives me a very nice image. Um, I got the artist. Let's see if the artist is in Wikidata to begin with. I just want to verify that one, this isn't in Wikidata. And okay, so this person got a lot of 
paintings, at least in Wikidata. So imagine this painting as well. It's in a national museum and the person is all represented here. So imagine this is a good one. I should actually be able to just copy the title and search for that one as well. And it doesn't find the title in Swedish. Um, I also just want to look for its, its identifier here. So make sure that it's not in there. No, I don't think that's in there. It's recently acquired and I couldn't find it in Wikidata. So we're going to use Wikidata to or the Kregel tool to do it. And I would like to use my schema to create government agencies, but of course, an error today I can't. So I'm going to say Swedish. I want to have the Swedish label being the title of this work. Um, copy that. Or Kregel. That's it. Description. Uh, start with an English one. And of course, it should be lowercase. Painting by. Let's see, I copied his name here. Instance of painting. And you can kind of see that it also here said that we need to say. Um, we need to have an instance of, but other things are rather optional. But why don't I get painting here? I do, but uh, slightly blah. The engineer, did we have that just mentioned in the data? Um, no, not. No. So I'm gonna head over to Cradle. I don't know that. I don't think it's on Commons yet. It recently acquired. Um, I didn't find this item, but he had plenty of, oh, I did, French painter. Yeah, and that matches the year when the, the painting is assumed to have been created, which I wonder if Craigle can also understand the date here. So if I say inception, um, No, I can't say circa here, that is what around this time, but I can do that with a qualifier in Wikidata. Um, sourcing circumstances, that's not a part of that one, is it? No. So describe that URL. I actually got that one. I should have a stable URL here. Yeah. Um, or is that a, no, I need to click here. I need to go here and then I need to click the stable URL. That's it. And there we go. Made from material. I think I got that information here. I do. I think that's a French word. So it should be similar in English. Um, that's a tricky one. Can't ensure what's what from here. Um, collection. It's the National Museum in Stockholm. Inventory number, that one as well. So here we go, uh, height, I do have height and the width. So mm -hmm. Jane says we might already have this painting. Oh, someone find it. Uh, you might be. need to check the ID in squid first. I don't know what squid is. Squid is a tool, right. Um, uh -huh. Well, if you imported the whole database, uh, that was probably before this 
acquired because this was recently acquired. Did he import yeah, it? But the entire database hasn't been imported. Uh, I know that ah. for a fact. Uh, but I should be able to have an ID, let's see here as well, which is usually in Wikidata. So if I copy this URL, if you here, I have an object ID, which I should be able to look up in Wikidata. Uh, even if this is already in Wikidata and I select not to create this, I have still showcase Craggle, so to see, so Craggle. So I still got my point through, so it wouldn't be terrifying. Let's look in that ID. Um, I usually think it's kind of easiest to search by any identifier here. Mm -hmm. And get, so sometimes you can also like combine this with painting. Um, mm, that's a different one, right? Yes, it is. Yes, right. that's something else. Um, but, So I, I would imagine this isn't in Wikidata, but I'm actually going to need to do a little bit more research than that to have it checked, especially if I can look the inventory number up somewhere. But I think that the case rather is clear. If you think of the, if I go to the regular create new item, um, this is what we got to work with and then we need to search for each property by ourselves. And by creating this schema now for government agencies, I hope that we can enable people to create more things quicker. Um, and that's kind of my goal of using it. So right, uh, considering that I need a bit more work for that, considering that there might be some login issues anyway. So I'm gonna stop it by there. Uh, and look into that later. Also, because I imagine I could do full import of it. So yeah, just that's it for today. It. Let me just test and see if Cradle works on my side, and see if I go to E three third. Yeah, exactly. What's it? That schema. Yeah. Loading. It says. No, no, I don't think it works today, unfortunately. No. <laughs> yeah, that that's it. Sometimes it has happened before; it will happen again. Um, yeah. Or most of this tool we actually showcase are built by like volunteers. So. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So sometimes they break, and sometimes uh, they are not around to see it. See it. Uh, uh, might be just something need to restart or something like that. Uh, yeah, yep. it happens. Uh, yep. As some manager of tools myself, it's not always that we got the time either to have yep. it. We, we have a question here. I don't know if we, we know the answer, but how do you do multilingual fields in Cradle? Ooh, that's a good question. I don't think that's possible. Um, I think you can add not multilingual, but several monolingual yeah yeah that that that's completely possible yeah um, but i don't think multilingual is possible it might be possible because they are at least thinking about it. i don't think it's decided yet or or at least i'm not aware of it they're thinking about yeah. introducing a new language for labels and such which is essentially multilingual oh, um, here's so that we the follow up. To do i can never things. make it work in family name cradle no. maybe you can show the family name see if yeah, if you bring see. that one up and so, see if we can problem solve something here. One. Um, family. Maybe this one has a family name. I am. Or, or there might be a total family name. Uh, a cradle for family names. Yeah. Okay. Um, and writing system, monolingual text. Yes. Yeah, because this has the data type monolingual text at least. Yeah. 
So that one sh should be just adding the like en for English and then the string. Yeah, and, and then, then you add a new one. And all yeah, um, that's how it should work at least. Yeah, but I imagine also like we could have one used for strings, and in the future, if they decide for it, we will be able to do like multilingual, and then text mm. in. Um, yeah. Because currently we duplicate the same label, for example, into English or Orchard languages if nothing is there. But this would save a lot of storage and a bunch of Orchard stuff, actually. Yeah. Um, yeah, no. Um, I, I personally want to know. I'm not an expert here. But yeah. Oh, that's a nice. If you select like multiply, which it can be, and also makes a drop down. Um, yeah. No, we cannot see the drop down. You see it. <laughs> oh, right. Because, yeah. Yes. That, if that's I click here, I see thing. a drop down. Yeah, with some Indeed. options in it. Right. Okay. All right. And then next week, it's a little bit special because as you all uh, probably already know it's the Wikidatacon 2021 during the next week and we will not do the regular show but we will do a show <laughs> and the idea we have is the we're doing this on the one, but it's a little different yeah so this will be in the Saturday evening so there has been two full days of conference and we will do a bit of commentary and uh, of the of what we've already seen. So what have we been impressed with? If there were any new tools or things, we might try them out and show them uh, again and have a little chat about it. Yeah, we will have a bit of a look back into what has happened and play with things. Yeah. yeah. And I think that is all for now. We'll be back at the same time, at least. Same type, regular place, uh, but with a different concept slightly. And until then, happy editing. Happy editing.